follow on from uh, here? We, we, can, we can start now. Just uh, welcoming all of you. Thank you for all of you who's here. I'm not sure that I know who's around except for the, those having their camp on. So we are now on our second webinar series. Uh, the presenter this time is from Indonesia, Dr. Rafa Makin. She's from the School of Graduate Studies, State Islamic University, Indonesia. Uh, the topic will be on Islamic-based social work intervention, the case of Yogyakarta. Uh, I will now present and give it to pass it over to Tracy to conduct the show. Our series. Okay. Hopefully, an interesting and enlightening one. Thank you. Welcome again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Professor Hata, for that for um, opening our webinar series and your role as president for um, for Puzzway. Um, Maybe I'd like to say a little bit uh, more detail about our presenter, Dr. Rafa Marken. Um, she's at her university. She is the uh, co-founder of the Center of Disability Studies and Services. She obtained her doctoral degree from the School of Social Work McGill University in Canada in 2011. And she teaches various courses, including social work theories and methodologies contemporary issues in social work, and disability and ageing. While her research area is mainly disability, she's also involved in various research and policy developments and other areas such as homelessness, women, and gerontology. So we're really pleased, um, Dr. Rafa Markin, that you've been, um, that you accepted our invitation to uh, present today. Um, just for our participants here, um, and in terms of the technology, um, you'll see a little uh, a chat button down below. If you would like to now or throughout the presentation, um, just click on that and you can write maybe your, your name and, and where you're um, connecting in from. We can see some names. We can't see everyone, but we'd love to know who has joined us here today. This session is being recorded and it will be made available um, on the Apazway uh, website as well. So the presentation will be for about 20 minutes and then there'll be opportunity uh, to have questions and discussion. And you can do that either through the chat um, facility, again that little uh, bubble chat bubble down the bottom, click on that and then you'll be able to write your message or you're able to um, with the numbers that we have, you'll be able to um, just speak any questions or comments that you would that you would like to make. And so, with that, um, warm welcome, everyone. Again, my name is Tracy Mafaleo, and I'm from Massey University in New Zealand. And um, it's my pleasure to now hand over to our guest speaker to um, hear about her research and her work. Thank you, Dr. Rafa. Thank you, Tracy. Um... Good day, everyone. My name is Rafa. Uh, I'm coming from the uh, Sunan Kalijaga State Islamic University, Yogyakarta, Indonesia. And today, um, I'm going to be talk about um, Islamic-based social work intervention in, in my city, Yogyakarta. Uh, before I start the discussion, I would like to express my thanks to uh, Dr. Hatta as the president of the APASWE. And my colleague in the Aspase, I'm not sure he's here, but hopefully he's joining us, uh, uh, Professor um, Adi Fakhruddin, who's uh, encouraging me and inviting me for the discussion. Also, Dr. Rafi Matelio for the, um, for the invitation. Um, I'm going to start um, my presentations uh, by uh, highlighting why I started the study. Um, I think this is important as part of the clarification who I am in the study. Um, as an Indonesian educated in the Western social work, received a training from the Miguel School of Social Work, I'm quickly interested in the issue of indigenization and uh, authenticization of social work. And then getting back to Indonesia, I started teaching at my university, um, South Islamic University, and being exposed to the idea of um, 
what we call in my university as integration and um, interconnection. Uh, this this values um, is an effort of my university at Islamic University to integrate between Islamic studies um, and social and humanity studies. So these two challenges um, and tasks before me um, encourage me to um, find my way um, into two um, aspects in the study. One is I think it's the point press to authenticity. I would like to find how the authentic and cultural practice of Indonesian social work on one hand as a way to make sense of the field or to make, you know, um, to contextualize this social practice into Indonesian culture. And, and then the second is to so integrate social work as discipline into Islamic studies where uh, my university is focusing on. Uh, so, so this is the context of the study that um, I have. Um, please, uh, next page, um, Dr. Joseph. Um, so in, in the case of uh, the, uh, the issue of religion, I think we've been witnessing the debate on the appropriateness of incorporating spiritual and religion in social work practice. And I think, although it's now become very much debated uh, or discussed, but I think it's what, it was not until the 80s that discussion is uh, about religion received for growing scholarly attention. Um, and I think it started in 1999 that uh, National Assistance of Social Work specifically mentioned the issue of individual and religious belief and practice as a part of the um, practice that we as social workers should adhere. So, when I was um, confronted by the debate into the literature, um, to be, to be uh, truthfully speaking, I was uh, quite um, surprised um, that the discussion of religion uh, become a debated issue because uh, growing up into um, in Indonesia, where religious become very important part. I thought everyone sharing the same value, and then when I saw when I read the book, and then there is a quite a huge debate. I start to realize that um, this is something that I need to, um, you know, be aware of. Um, next, I think I, I don't need to um, uh, discuss this uh, slide um, in much detail. I think I just we need to be um, one thing that I noted from this is a social worker. As a social worker, we are trained and un, uh, to understand and uh, spiritual life of the client as a part um, or important part of the interventions. I think this uh, I would like to emphasize from this slide. Next, so what about Indonesia and uh, social work um, in Islam? Um, I think if we look back to the literature, we are um, able to find a pretty good literature on Islam and social work. Um, Al Khainawi and Graham, for instance, in 2000. And then um, I enjoy very much uh, reading the ragab, uh, ragab work on um, Islamic perspective um, on social work. Um, and one thing that all this um, literature share, I think, is the understanding that Islam for Muslim, for, for it, Eden is comprehensive and all in ways of life. So, Muslim, Muslim need to be adapted according to Muslim value. I think, I think this is the, the message in the literature. So, um, coming to the issue of um, worldview, um, Muslim, Indonesia is one of the uh, countries who has the biggest Muslim population. We are a big country with more than 280 population and 80% of the population are Muslim. So um, Islam has become um, part of our good value, um, with few, and then the issue of ontological and epistemological become very important, I think, how Islamic values shape client and worker behavior 
problem and solution. Uh, but the thing about Indonesia is because Islam has been part of a very embedded and um, important part of the culture. Sometimes, you know, Islam is become being taken for granted in the sense that uh, as a practitioner of social work and also academician, sometimes we're not really aware, um, you know, our own um, uh, value. Or in, in another way, I would like to say that um, the the effort to um, find the authenticity of Islamic work uh, need to dismantle this word view in Indonesian social work practice to understand uh, actually how social workers uh, perceive religion and how and then this religion is applied in social work practice. Uh, next please. Uh, I would not go back to this slide later on, uh, but I think also what we need to be understood um, from this slide um, is that another thing that we need to um, highlight concerning the issue of religions um, and social work practice is also the issue of value clarity as mentioned by um, Edward and Furman in this study. The very deeply ingrained Islamic values in Indonesia, for instance, sometimes hinder some workers to be aware of, you know, the possibility of her or his imposing her own value, um, or even, you know, the institutionalization of the value within the uh, the uh, institutional practice. Um, I think this is very important, and we're gonna go back to this slide uh, later on, so we can move to the next um, slide, please. Well, the uh, objective of this study, um, I have to uh, mention here that in the beginning, my research is this is it's actually it's not only Islamic um, perspective and practice, uh, but then later on I found out that most of the institution that we are visiting and most of the uh, social worker that we are interviewing are Muslim. So it's only fair that in the end. I changed um, the title and also the focus on his Islamic perspective in this of religion. But um, the objective of this study in, in the beginning is to explore how social work uh, perceive religious-based intervention and what kind of program activities um, being uh, provided or held uh, based, uh, you know, in the institution setting. And also, I would like to understand how social worker uh, perspective uh, on the question of whether or not um, the religious uh, approach is compatible with the modern social work. Um, next, please. Um, uh, this is not a very huge study, actually. Um, I only starting the study with a uh, pan social worker in the institution and the area of three area, which is uh, substance abuse and then domestic violence and disability. And this is a totally uh, qualitative uh, study, so there is no quantitative involved in this. Um, the main participant of the study are social worker in the institution. But uh, I also have to um, highlight and underline here that what we define as social worker, it could be very wide meaning. That includes uh, what we call as um, pambina agama or guru agama, which is like a Islamic and religious counselor in, in, in the institution. So um, in, in other words, the word of social worker is become very, you know, usually uh, very loosely defined here. Next, please. Um, so I'm going to talk about the findings of the uh, study. Um, I would like to start next. Um, with my statement before that um, as a Muslim country with uh, the biggest Muslim population, so we cannot um, avoid the fact that Islam is a worldview of most um, Indonesians. So it means that um, when we talk about social work practice, we have to dig up into the uh, you know, three aspects of the practice, which 
you know, epistemological, ontological, and methodological aspect. Uh, in this vein, so religion or Islam is used as a method of intervention, uh, as well as full intervention, but also ethic and value based. Um, I think this whole three component is, is also pretty much observable in the case of uh, my study. Next, please. Um, Yes, next. In, in more uh, practical uh, perspective, I think uh, we will see that um, religion, in this case Islam, uh, is become a very important part of the rehabilitation program and curriculum in the institutions. Um, religion or Islam is also used as a main approach of the interventions, both as psychological or even legal intervention in some cases, um, and uh, from assessment to termination. So um, religion has become pretty much part, uh, important part of the practice. Next, please. Um, this is um, perhaps uh, one aspect of the um, study that we might call epistemological um, aspect, you know. Um, it's become very obvious uh, from the very beginning of the interview that when we talk about clients and then about the problem, we see that um, religious explanations is become um, a way of uh, of a worker to define the problem. So, a client workers, and I think as well as client, although I'm not including client in this study, is defining the problem by um, connecting it with defined explanations. Um, and of course, using Islamic term or language to explain that. So the word uh, takdir, for instance, um, meaning destiny, uh, takdir is Arabic word meaning destiny, um, is pretty much used um, when you know um, workers um, define uh, and try to understand why the client has a problem. Uh, in more cultural perspective, because we're talking about Dukkha, Dukkha is at the center of German civilization. We also have a very similar term, of, although it's a little bit different, um, you know, the, the word of Nrimo, uh, um, which is acceptance, um, it's also become um, very much the word for narrative and understanding the, the, the problem. Um, at the same time, I think, uh, Workers also see that uh, problems held by client is rise from the or caused by the violation of uh, Islamic principle and value. Let's get uh, to the next slide to see what I'm what I'm talking about. So, uh, in 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 disability um, rehabilitation in the disability aspect, for instance, um, the um, worker is pretty much um, showing or demonstrating the belief of what we call in disability studies as moral explanations or a moral model of disability. Well, as we know that uh, many cultural beliefs share a similar belief concerning the cause of disability. Disability is seen as a result of prejudice or the violation of cultural and religious, uh, religious value and principle. Um, while medical and even now human rights approach uh, has been other in the current social practice in disability rehabilitation concerning disability in Indonesia, but the moral explanation continues to be observable uh, and become part of the worker narrative. Uh, in the slide, for example, I mentioned that uh, one of the sentences um, uh, explained by the um, by the uh, worker is that some clients here are being blind because they're on deeds, they are drinking too much, and they are violating you know religious rule because as a Muslim you're not supposed to be drinking, and as a result of you know their their drinking habits, so they become blind. This is the exact word that I got from the narrative and explaining or demonstrating. Um, what I might call it uh, earlier as a, as a moral model of disability. Uh, the same thing, the next slide, with the issue of substance abuse. 
um, a worker in the drug center, for instance, say that um, most of the clients who become a drug addict because they are forgetting the ground. Um, I put the ground in the equation, um, equation here. Um, what they mean is, um, according to the worker, the client are enjoying the, much the material world, um, success, money, the hectic life of professional life, and fail to remember that there are other things in life. So the word, the crown here, I think indicating the balance between material and spiritual world. And I think the worker also use religion as a clear reference when we, they're talking about the ground here. So these two examples of the uh, worker's uh, statement indicating that, you know, um, what I mentioned to you before, the way workers can find the problem is not very much uh, far from, you know, a religious interpretation or divine explanation. They connected the problem with, um, you know, the violation of, uh, of religious and Islamic principles. Next. Um, and my second uh, part of the um, study is, um, I would like to understand how actually the workers perceive religion or the, the, the role of Islam in the interventions. And um, um, next please, I presented here um, in a very loosely um, uh, way, five roles that um, according to workers um, being played by religion. First is tool of behavioral change. The second is that the natural healing system. And then uh, the third is new ethic. And then as a counter discourse and as a universal, universal principle. This uh, five um, spectrum is not equally um, observable but i think it's also uh, quite visible in, in in the case of uh, of uh, yogyakarta i'm going to start with the um, the next slide uh, in some of uh, the form of islamic based program uh, owned by institutions so the three settings that I'm working on, first is um, disability and substance abuse. I'm, uh, I'm focusing specifically to the state-owned institution. So um, I'm visiting the social worker in rehabilitation uh, uh, center of uh, substance abuse and also disability. And uh, as you will see later, there is quite significant difference in terms of the way religious um, play uh, between the state own uh, institutions uh, and then uh, religious institution and also non-state um, institution. So I'm going to see, um, I'm going to show you um, what kind of uh, Islamic programs is running in the rehabilitation institution, both in substance abuse and disability. So usually Islamic subject is part of the curriculum in the rehabilitation program. Uh, so we have here uh, activities like weekly or even daily religious classes uh, and covering a lot of themes, various themes from knowledge about daily ritual is part of the very important aspect of the curriculum. You know, things like praying or salat in, uh, in Islam and then Quranic recitings um, and others. The uh, second, uh, second practice is also uh, involving zikir or incantation, uh, meaning you know uh, you incantate uh, the word of Allah and um, Rasulullah or the Prophet many times, and then uh, praying together, or we call it uh, jamaah, and then night praying or tahajjud is become also a very much practice in most of the institutions. Uh, next. So um, I mentioned before that one of the role of religion seen by client is a tool for behavioral change. In the case of substance abuse, for example, um, 
Islam um, and religions uh, in general is is this view as as seen as a medium for mental and psychological restoration. So in this case, uh, as as I mentioned in the um, and the uh, slide, I think religion is a medium for mental and psychological restoration. So the worker encourages clients to live spiritually healthy. Uh, so the 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 healthness and the wellness of spirituality and also um, physically as well is is become a key to get back to the community and uh, return to the social functioning. Uh, so the worker, which is called in this setting as combina agama of religious counselor is become catalyst in restoring the mental disturbance of the victim or, or the uh, drug addict. Uh, next, please. Um, I quote here one of the worker statements uh, concerning how they see the problem and also uh, how the religion play um, role in the intervention. She said that it's very difficult not to say that this client are not wrong. They are drug abuser. I know that we cannot blame them. However, in whatever perspective, they will be considered as doing wrong. So it's hard to say otherwise. But with religion, a client might be aware that what he or she is doing is wrong. And this is where the entry point is. Only when client aware and admit that they are wrong, then he or she want to change his or her habit or correct their behavior. This is a step to success. Uh, I saw some crying, some client were crying after praying. So this is um, demonstrate how a worker believe on, um, you know, the importance of religion as the entry point to develop a client awareness. Um, of the problems and the you know negative um, behavior that they saw in and by developing the awareness of the client using the religion so it become a, a point of success um, next at the same time um, this also another narrative um, shown by um, worker in drug abuse, in substance abuse. Um, he noted the um, possible ethical conflict between um, religions uh, or Islam in this case and, um, and the social values, traditional values. Um, for example, in the case of uh, Jama'ah prayer or prayer together in, 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 in the mosque or in the institution, is become part of the daily activities of the uh, clients. Um, this is a way of disciplining the client. So if the, the client is um, not joining the jama'ah, usually they have they're going to get the punishment. Um, one of the workers said that it might seem unethical uh, from a traditional social work practice, but he said that um, the prior the jama is a way of disciplining and that's also uh, a way of progressing and changing the client behavior um, without which the client will be able to uh, restore the, his mental and psychological um, situation and would not uh, end the program so um, this is very interesting actually there are also a lot of uh, possible uh, although not related to, to the issue of religion, but the possible conflict uh, has been um, um, told by worker uh, issue like confidentially in others. But in terms of religion, I think this is pretty much uh, what they think of and what they feel. Uh, next, please. So if um, in the beginnings, um, in the previously we're talking about um, religion or Islam as tool of behavioral change. Uh, we're not talking about um, Islam as natural healing system and universal values. I think this um, part is um, this aspect or this role is um, mentioned by those workers who work on a very Islamic 
um, non-state institutions. We call it in Indonesia things like uh, pondok setirah or setirah zikir. This is our um, Islamic-based interventions for research and abuse. And um, of course, in this case, so the program that they are offering to the client is mostly uh, very much um, Islamic uh, healing tradition, including with it and zikir, and then prayer, and also the daily ritual consists of set and prayer and zikir that is commonly practiced in, in Sufi orders. Uh, next. The basic, assumption, the basic assumption of the practice in this uh, kind of setting, in this Islamic setting, is the balance between um, micro and macro cosmos, yin and yang. Um, um, so in, in, in the, the assumption that uh, developed from this intervention is the body is the microcosmos. Problem is believed to be resolved from the imbalance between micro and macro. So the healing is aim or uh, uh, doing to return the balance. So the micro and macro here is defined as you know spiritual and material, soul and body, woodly and non-woodly wood, as uh, I think pretty, pretty much um, everyone defined in this sense. Um, the use of uh, Quranic or Arabic um, uh, recitations um, and also, um, I don't know what we call it in, 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 in English. It's like the, there is, they use the like Quranic alphabet and other, and it is believed to guard it, the individual from, um, from a bad thing. So the malaika, by using this um, zikir and with it, and also uh, Quranic and Arabic model, it's believed that the malaika or angel is. Um, guarding this individual and guard and heal the body. I think um, that's um, the practice that they have been. So there is a, a notion, a next place of what they call as the doctor of the heart um, or tibul kulub. Um, and this is just one of the praying that usually um, or commonly practiced in this um, uh, natural healing or Islamic healing system. Next. So um, the practice that they're doing in the Pondok uh, Satira or Islamic institution is um, the client will be reciting zikir together with um, the religious counselor for 30 minutes before or after the five time prayers. Um, so the practice is, is intended to remind the, the client of his of his of the God, and then you know of course the the aim is also to to to, to uh, make individual very close to God as the ultimate balance. Uh, they also um, apply or um, one of the activities that has been offered to the client is what they call as sauba sower, or they need to sower in the middle of the night on the very early uh, of the day. So the sower is meant to fix him so that they feel. Uh, clean so the water symbolically cleans both soul and also the physic um, next so this is uh, one of the worker narrative in 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 this islamic institution um based as i mentioned to you before that um the practice in this institution is very much based on the post sufism practice so the Sufi belief that each organ of the human body has substantial function and it affects another. Therefore, each individual needs to maintain this function. An individual will get sick because or have a problem in this sense, uh, you know, whether it's physical problem, social problem, because his organ does not function well, or there is a disequilibrium between body and soul, material and spiritual. Uh, next, please. Um, some of the um, worker in this uh, Islamic setting also call their approach as universal because it's an attempt of someone to indulge in the attribution of the universe. So in other words, he or she must keep the balance 
uh, of the universe. Um, so this is still relying on yin and yang uh, cosmos and microcosmos and macrocosmos uh, principle that I mentioned before. Next. Next slide, yeah. Um, and this is the third um, rule that has been um, believed by the workers. This is coming from also another or different setting, um, which is non-state government, um, mostly you know, community-based social work practice. Um, so in this um, setting, um, religion is seen as, uh, as in the over new interpretation of religious sect and seeing religion as, as a counter discourse and as well as a, as a new ethic. What I mean by here is we can see in the next slide. So I'm talking here about uh, the center of domestic violence run by. Um, uh, women organization actually. Um, in this setting, religion is seen as a part of the problem, uh, meaning that um, in some cases, um, the domestic violence happened because of the interpretation of Al Quran, which is the source of Islamic um, teaching and hadith or the prophet tradition which they think as justifying the cultural view that woman is inferior uh, to men or the end men is superior. So there is some concept uh, derived, derived from the Quran or Islamic uh, legal tradition, but just like Nuzus, which is uh, wife disobedience, and then some of the verses in the Quran, like al-Nisa, meaning, um, you know, like men is superior than women. And also the issue of inheritance uh, and others. This, in some perspective, um, has been, or in in the worker perspective, has been justifying the cultural view that woman is inferior than man, and and become a, a, a cause of the um, domestic violence experienced by women. Woman. So having this case, so religious or interpretation of religious texts become very much important as a solution or as a, as a model of interventions. Next, please. Next slide. So Rifkani said the institution that I'm working with is claim itself as a feminist Muslim, so believing that Islam is respectful to women. So they observe that misinterpretation of religious teachings, uh, you know, the things that I mentioned before, uh, sometimes become justifications for um, husbands to beat their wife for the purpose of disciplining or educating. Um, and in Rizka, Rizka Anissa perspective, uh, you know, this is very wrong because Islamic value is emphasizing justice wisdom and positive behavior so, so the word beating in quran uh, doesn't have to be interpreted as physical beating but uh, should be interpreted in different ways and this misinterpretation of the verses of the quran has rendered to the fact that majority of women suffer from domestic violence are typically those defied as the obedient uh, wife um, while the husband are so pious muslim with good Islamic education. So based on these um, cases, then the worker in Rifka Anissa, uh, next please, uh, highlighted, uh, next slide, yeah, hi highlighted that the religious approach is not specifically addressed since it has embedded in the interventions. Uh, but what they mostly doing is basically Islamic reinterpretations um, used as a counter discourse um, of the practice. Um, so uh, to conclude what I said that um, there is three very distinctive uh, practice um, from the three institutions uh, or three part of institution that I'm focusing on um, and all of them showing uh, different practice and also different role of Islam 
in uh, in the process of interventions. So, uh, so to conclude this uh, presentation, I would like to just highlighting how the impact of my study in in some of practice and also the issue or the idea of authentication of Islamic social work. Um, the first one I would like to highlight is, as I mentioned to you before, the need to dismantle the world view of uh, the world view of the Muslim uh, or social worker, while at the same time also incorporating the epistemological and ontological aspect of the issue. Meaning that you know, of course, we need to um, understand the world view of the client and workers. And the world view here is, as I mentioned to you before including how workers define the problem and also define the solutions. And the second thing that I would like to highlight is of course uh, the value the value clarity. Uh, how as a worker, as a Muslim worker, for instance, we are um, understanding um, the client perspective and we're not imposing our own values because sometimes it's very difficult when you know, religion and Islam become a very, the majority and become a mainstream perspective, become a mainstream what you, then sometimes we feel that there is some other client who might be not sharing the same or similar values and beliefs. Um, so um, the issue of reflection, I think, the self-reflectivity is, I think, is very much important in this case. Uh, regarding the issue of authenticity as a conceptual framework, I don't think that I, of able to finish the uh, my discussion here because it's also um, very much um, related to the issue of who you know the issue of Islamic Islamization of knowledge and um, integration uh, as part of the knowledge concept that uh, we need to address uh, and I don't think I would be able to share it in this uh, particular time so I'm going to conclude my discussion with this and uh, thank you very much for everyone's attention hopefully it's uh, understandable thank you Freddy. I'm giving back to you many thanks um, Dr. Rofa for that very interesting and insightful um, presentation um, I really enjoyed learning about um, the results from your study and um, it really invites us to think about um, the 